What is going on, YouTube? This is Arctic Fox. Welcome back to the channel. Today, we're doing a deep dive into the Aiden Clune case. For those of you unfamiliar with this case, Aiden Clune is a 19-year-old from Sonoma, California, who is missing. He's been missing since the 27th of April, 2022. He is 5 foot 8 inches tall and weighs 125 pounds with brown hair and brown eyes. Aiden was actually going through a mental health crisis that was triggered by a recent medication change, possibly. He drove out into the desert, left his vehicle, and was tracked to have walked about 10 miles, but the tracks were lost. He was last seen wearing black high-top Nikes a gray sweatshirt, a black North Face coat, and jeans. Anyone with information about Aiden or his whereabouts needs to contact the Elko County Sheriff's Office at 775-738-3421. Guys, this case is a long one. It's very involved, and we're going to be here for a little bit. If you need to grab a snack, now's the time to do it. But we're going to be here, and we're going to go deep into this case. So, as I said, Aiden is 19 years old. He's from Sonoma, California, and he had been suffering from some depression symptoms. His, uh, his mom, Amy Clune, was hopeful that he would get better when he finally agreed to go and get counseling. But that was until he got a text on his phone and had a panic attack. When Amy asked Aiden what, the, what was the matter, he packed, he wouldn't say anything. He wouldn't tell her what was wrong, but he packed a bag and said he had to go and for her not to answer the door for anyone. He said he might go stay with his dad, but that he had to get out of Sonoma. Amy watched helplessly as Aiden sped away in his maroon 2007 Nissan Frontier. She was now more worried than ever for her son. Aiden is an incredibly talented and hardworking 19-year-old. He lives with his mom in Sonoma, and Sonoma is just roughly an hour northeast of San Francisco. Aiden and his dad were never really all that close. They never saw eye to eye, but in recent years, they had been working on trying to form some type of relationship. Aiden did amazing in school, but more than anything, he was interested in music. He had been playing various instruments since the time he was in fourth grade, but his main passion was the guitar. He planned to build a business around music, and his mom was very proud of him. Aiden was like many, and the pandemic really took a toll on him. He had been in advanced classes, but when the pandemic hit and everyone was in isolation, he lost his interest in school altogether. Aiden had always been very independent and private, and he fell into a horrible depression during this time to the point that his mother could barely pull him out of bed for class. His mom attempted to get Aiden counseling through her insurance provider, Kaiser, but members of this program are only allowed to seek services at Kaiser-specific facilities. It's very rare that an exception will be made for them to be allowed to see an out-of-network provider. Due to the overwhelming amount of people seeking services, the only thing offered to Aiden was group therapy, which is something that Aiden simply was not comfortable with. The appointments were also very spread out, oftentimes up to six weeks apart. And on top of all of this, Aiden had recently broken it off with his first girlfriend. With the support of his mom, Aiden was able to push through and graduated high school with honors. In June of 2021. His mom was hopeful that things would start looking up for Aiden. He even started a new job at a coffee shop and said that he was going to save money to get his own apartment. And he did form a few friendships within the small group, but it wasn't long before Aiden's depression set in again. His mother said that Aiden was having issues with people at his job doing things that Aiden just didn't want any part of. Aiden was already in a fragile state and decided it was best to quit his job. Aiden did, however, receive a pretty sizable tax refund from his time working at the coffee shop. Aiden had planned on going to Washington to live with his cousin Jordan, who had a spare room, 
And he was excited because Washington has a big music scene, and Aiden knew some of the people in the scene there. Aiden's mom was also excited because she believed that this was just what Aiden needed to finally be happy and beat the Depression. She thought that this was just a rough patch and that this move would help broaden his horizons. So Aiden headed to Washington, and at first, everything was great, but it didn't take long for the novelty to wear off. Jordan had some issues from PTSD himself from his time in the Marine Corps, and this made Aiden, who was already on edge and suffering from his own mental issues, very nervous. And after only 10 days of living with Jordan, Aiden called his mom, and he was frantic, and said that he felt like his cousin was out to get him. He wasn't getting any sleep, and his mother said that Aiden genuinely seemed afraid. Amy found this very disturbing, as Aiden and his cousin had always had a very good relationship, but after less than two weeks, Aiden changed course yet again and said that he was going to go stay with his uncle. But this, too, would fail. It only took a few days for Aiden to call Amy paranoid about his uncle. And this is when Aiden's mom really started to panic, knowing that something was seriously off with Aiden. He was making fast and irrational decisions, and his mom just could not seem to figure out what was going on with Aiden. Aiden then left the uncle's house and went to stay with a friend of Jordan's who he barely knew. Aiden's mom, at this point, started to really wonder if Aiden's rash decision-making was an ominous sign of a more serious mental health condition. Aiden left the friend's house without any kind of plan, just driving randomly around Washington and the surrounding states, and often sleeping in his truck. And at this point, Amy knew something was drastically wrong with her son. This behavior was very out of character for him. He was blowing through his tax return, and Aiden had always been very responsible. She called Aiden and told him to just come home. She was hoping that taking a break from everything would help Aiden to get back on track. And he took his mom up on this and even decided to attempt to get help from, for his mental health from Kaiser again. But he, he got a referral and finally found an older therapist to work with. But after just two sessions, Aiden said that the therapist fired him as a patient because he wasn't depressed enough to warrant counseling. At this point, Aiden's mom was at her wit's end with Kaiser over their unwillingness to treat Aiden, and I don't blame her. It was becoming more and more obvious that Aiden needed help urgently. In March, Aiden found another job at a nearby market. And this job had great pay and benefits, but Aiden was increasingly temperamental and angry. And to top everything off, Aiden had a run-in at this job with someone from his previous job on his very first day of actual work. Unfortunately, this former co-worker was now working at the market that Aiden had just started working at. And he said something to Aiden that really rubbed him the wrong way to the point that Aiden left work and went home and quit after only one day of work. This was Amy's breaking point, and she called Kaiser herself, begging for Aiden to be seen due to his strange and irrational behavior. Their response was that Aiden was 19 and an adult, and therefore he would have to seek the help himself, and that they could not go by what his mom was telling them. He needed to bring himself in. And yes, we've seen how well that has worked out for him so far in the past. <sighs> Desperate for help, his mother started calling around to nonprofit counselors and some out of network facilities. Finally, she found one that was willing to work with her and agreed to see Aiden immediately. She felt like Aiden was finally going to get the help that he needed. But all of that changed when Aiden got that message on his phone that I referenced in the beginning of this video. He got the message and said that he had to get out of there. He quickly packed a bag and jetted. Aiden refused to tell his mom what the message said or what was going on. All he said is that he was going to stay with his dad, which made no sense because Aiden had never been close to his dad. 
He stuffed a Rubbermaid tote into the back of his truck before he left and told his mom not to answer the door for anyone. His mother felt helpless as she watched Aiden's truck disappear, not knowing that this would be the last time that she would see her son. However, Aiden didn't go to his dad's. He actually went to his cousin Michaela's house. Later, his mother would talk to Michaela's mom, and she, <coughs> excuse me, and she told um, Amy that he started acting strangely and ended up leaving her place. Aiden's dad had not had any contact with Aiden either, which really worried Amy. Then Aiden blocked Amy's number, and in a panic. She started checking Aiden's banking activity and discovered that Aiden was going in the opposite direction from his father's. Aiden's mom started frantically calling all the family members, and one cousin had actually heard from Aiden. Eventually, Aiden answered his mother's call, but he was irate with her for trying to keep tabs on him. She begged him to come home, but he refused, saying that he felt like it was unsafe for him to be in Sonoma. She felt like Aiden was becoming delusional, and at this point, she considered filing the paperwork to Baker Act Aiden, and if you're unfamiliar with that, it's when a person has a mental illness so severe that they present a danger to themselves and others, and that is what she felt she needed to do to get Aiden the help that he needed is for him to be committed against his will. A few hours later, his mother talked with him again, and Aiden said that he had spoken to his grandmother and her husband, and that he was going to go and stay with his grandparents in Salt Lake City. He seemed really excited to see them, and they were going to set a trailer up for him so he would have his own space. And this gave Aiden's mom a little peace of mind, but this would not last for long. During the drive to his grandparents, Aiden's thoughts started to get the best of him. He called his mom yet again with paranoid questions about his own grandparents, and this really set off Amy's alarm bells. It's almost as if Aiden had two different personalities, one being the happy and outgoing Aiden that everyone knew and loved, and the other the paranoid Aiden that desperately needed mental help. The last phone call that he made to his mom, they actually shared a very sweet moment where Aiden asked for Amy to read to him like she did when he was little. He seemed like he was aware, but he was exhausted. The next day, Aiden was supposed to meet his grandpa Mike at a Chevron station. Even though he was only an hour away from his grandparents' house, he told Mike that his GPS wasn't working and that he needed Mike. He needed to follow Mike to the house. The grandfather and a, the grandfather and a friend drove to meet Aiden at the gas station, and the next thing you know, Amy gets a call from Grandma Debbie that Aiden had tried to kidnap Grandpa Mike. He actually tore off in the opposite direction from the grandparents, saying he was taking Mike to Washington. Aiden eventually pulled over and told Mike to get out. And of course, this had Amy panicked out of her mind. She told Grandma Debbie to call the police, but in an attempt to protect Aiden, unfortunately, Debbie did not call authorities. But in fairness to Debbie, she was also unaware of the full extent of the mental health issues that Aiden had been going through. Amy started calling every law enforcement agency that she could think of and was met with a ton of rudeness along the way. She also called local businesses and to no avail. Finally, a transaction for gas and a withdrawal of $200 showed up on Aiden's bank account from a Chevron in Elko, Utah. She called the Chevron asking the cashier to see if they asking the cashier if they had seen Aiden and she was told that the transaction was actually from the night before so at this point Aiden had hours to be far from that Chevron station at this point the Elko Sheriff's Department finally decided to help Amy they put a bolo out for Aiden and a description of his pickup, and they also let 
people know in the bolo that Aiden was suffering from mental health issues. They told Amy to call the Nevada Highway Patrol. These law enforcement agencies basically passed this poor mother around as if they couldn't be bothered. The next day, Amy called around to several hotels in the area, and Aiden had actually been spotted on CCTV footage at a hotel. He had been spotted wearing a black North Face jacket, black high-top Nikes, and a gray sweatshirt. Aiden had driven his truck to Curie that morning. It's actually a small little ghost town. Aiden had pulled his truck over on Highway 93, and there was a witness who saw Aiden leave and return to his truck several times. Aiden had his guitar, and it's thought that Aiden wanted to clear his head and play some music. But moments after Aiden left his truck again, a Nevada Highway Patrol car rolled up and started looking around his truck. There were keys and a wallet in the truck, and it was unlocked. And per the witness, as this was happening, he saw Aiden crouch down behind the bushes, hiding from the officer. He was probably afraid he was in trouble for something. As the officer was leaving, Aiden was seen running into the mountains with his guitar. The Elko County Sheriff dropped the ball in that they did not let the Nevada Highway Patrol know about the bolo for Aiden and that he had mental health issues. At this point, Aiden had just slipped through their hands and disappeared into the wilderness. On the 29th of April, 2022, Amy received a phone call from a Nevada Highway Patrol officer letting her know that Aiden's truck had been found with his keys and wallet inside. At this point, as you can imagine, she was absolutely livid at the lack of communication between the various law enforcement agencies. Now, it had been hours since Aiden was near the truck and he could be anywhere. Amy went to Curie to look for Aiden, and searchers were able to track Aiden's footprints all the way to the mountains, where they found Aiden's guitar at the base of the mountains. Aiden's last cell ping was at 8 a.m. that Thursday morning. It seems as though Aiden had been evading the searchers based off of the, the footprint patterns. He had been hiding in the bushes and had been repeatedly taking his shoes off and on. This may have been an attempt to hide his tracks. His prints were tracked for 10 aerial miles. A friend of Aiden's told Amy that Aiden had actually started a new medication. This actually shocked Amy as she had been trying to get Aiden to get on meds, but she had no clue that he had actually started a medication. He had actually started a medication about a month prior, according to the friend, and his doctor had recently changed his meds, which is dangerous for anyone, yet alone, or let alone, someone who is suffering for, from mental illness and only able to see their provider every four to six weeks. As a mental health patient myself, I can tell you how important it is to be closely monitored when starting a new medication. This started to make Aiden's recent behaviors make a little bit more sense to Amy. Much of it may be able to be contributed to the medication. After two weeks, the searchers were unable to follow Aiden's tracks any longer, and they were just about to call off the search, but that day, they did find a few faint prints on Palomino Ridge at an elevation of around 7,000 feet. Aiden has been missing for close to three months at this point, but Amy and the family are not giving up hope on finding him. I honestly feel as though Kaiser should be sued due to their inability and unwillingness to provide Aiden the care that he so desperately needed. Also, the, little, the, the, the complete lack of communication between the Elko Sheriff Department and the Nevada Highway Patrol is inexcusable. Had the bolo with the description of Aiden's truck and the fact that he was in the midst of a mental break been properly communicated, there's reason to believe that Aiden may have been searched for more thoroughly when his truck was spotted. If you've seen Aiden or you have any information as to his whereabouts, please contact the Elko County Sheriff at 
three, four, two, one. Guys, I know this has been a long one, and I really appreciate you all hanging in there with me as we've dug into this case a little bit. I really need your help here because it's been almost three months. We need to get Aiden the coverage that he deserves. His case, unfortunately, is being buried by the Dylan Rounds case right now, and everyone seems to have forgotten about Aiden. So do me a favor, give the video a like. It really, really does help more people to see Aiden's face and to hear his story. Also, if you're not subscribed to the channel yet, please consider clicking that red subscribe button. It really, really helps me out. And if you ring that notification bell, you'll be alerted every time I post another missing persons video. But the most important thing, that I need for you to do above all else is to click that share button. Share this to your Facebook, your Twitter, your Instagram, wherever you have social media. Guys, it only takes a second of your time and it can make all the difference in the world in whether we're able to find Aiden and bring him home or not. As always, I thank you so much for tuning in and watching. I appreciate each and every single one of you. Y'all be kind to one another out there, and I'll see you in the next video.